It doesn't look too bad. He for sure fell out of that nest. Yeah. Toad cast moment. Look at this cringe little glizzy gobbler. I think she's gonna make a full recovery. I call these bee nuggets. Look at this beautiful green water. Good morning, everybody. I'm on my way to go pick up a hawk that fell out of a nest in someone's neighborhood. I got a call about it on our rehab phone. Okay, the hawk is somewhere in this neighborhood. Isn't it funny how there's just hawks in these random little places like this? This looks like a young Mississippi floor. kite. Yeah. This woman oh, found it okay, falling so out of a nest in her That's yard. Good. As you can see, this is the nest up here, I think. All right, everybody. We finally got another one that is not horribly, horribly injured and probably gonna die. This one's just a baby. He for sure fell out of that nest, but there's no way I could climb that tree to get him back in and i'm not 100 sure whether it's a hawk nest or a squirrel nest but okay i'm gonna go home get this guy fed and then i'm gonna feed the other hawk that we have that might probably die because he can't even stand up and then i'm gonna take both of these little guys to all things wild oh boy my living room's full of wild animals again this little possum bean is doing very well i like to keep him covered up in this little blanket but she has been eating and pooping just fine i think she's gonna make a full recovery and she'll be able to be released pretty soon kite that we got the other day is less than thriving and he cannot grab me with his hands but made a bit of improvement you see how he can grab things now before he couldn't even grab stuff now he can open Ooh, see how he can grab the cloth there he couldn't do that before but these fledglings are easy to take care of because you just have to feed them and look how good this little guy already is at eating look look at that beautiful bowl it's funny how quickly they go from just being wild little birds to just devouring the food i give them that's why i was saying before you guys raptors are not hard to take care of unless they're injured now if you have to take in one with a broken wing or some kind of leg issue then of course it's gonna be hard to take care of but the trick with these guys is to make sure that they don't get it caught on their beak you see if it gets caught on the point of their beak then they might not be able to swallow it you see how it's just stuck on his beak okay, and he's done eating so i'm gonna give this last little piece to this little precious bean this one's very scared of me because i haven't been coddling it. good night precious bean but now that I have fed him and he has a full tummy, I'm going to pick up one more dove that I got a call about this morning. Then we're going to head straight to all things wild. And pretty soon I should be getting a sub permit from them or another friend for these guys. So I don't have to just keep driving them down there. Because this is the seventh raptor that we've gotten in Waco so far in the last, I don't know, two weeks. Two screech owls, three kites, and a couple hawks. This is one particular instance where I really wish that I was a falconer so I could just have this guy on a falconry permit. Because I feel like him and I would be good friends. Even though... They obviously don't think about very much at all. I've done my official exam on this beautiful man, and he is absurdly healthy. He just fell out of the nest. It's a shame he would be the perfect age for falconry, but I don't want this boy to imprint on me. But even if they do, they go back to the wild just fine. Everyone who does falconry eventually has to release their falcons, and they all imprint on them. A lot of times, the falcons will just leave them after five years of working together. Okay, it's the same day. I actually brought my checkbook, because I have no more money in the Urban Rescue Ranch business bank account. I spent everything on all this stuff. Okay, I got a little cringe. Oh, come on. I'm not trying to get demonetized. I got this little cringe dove, as you guys can see. I've showed you guys doves plenty of times. I'm not going to go ahead and feed this guy because the woman just fed him. And his crop feels kind of full. I'm just going to take him with the hawks straight down to all things wild. Okay, we got this little guy loaded up. We got this little guy loaded up. And we got this little fella loaded up. And we only have to drive an hour. <laughs> right off the bat, I got to get a little bit more experience with doing some fluid injections for our little fella that we brought in. Then we put him to sleep and put him on the x-ray table to see what was wrong with him exactly. It's tell because this was a while ago but i believe he had an issue with his pelvis or his lower spine but we cleaned a nice enclosure for him for him to come back from his anesthesia this other little fella is going to be just fine in here until he's ready to go into the flight pen after that i got to help bottle feed the fawns and put together their milk replacer for some reason this cringe little man won't grow and he's having yeah. trouble drinking but luckily he is starting to eat solid foods and this chubby boy here needs to be deworm later an animal control officer came in with a hawk that either got illegally shot or was shot protecting chickens after we put him under and gave him an x-ray we could see that the tip of his wing was clipped and broken but luckily we didn't see any bullets in the actual body after that april helped me get a little bit more experience with creating casts for broken wings and i got some more hands-on experience with fluid injections which is so important because most of these guys when they come in are really dehydrated and to those of you that want to be rehabbers this is completely necessary so if you're scared of needles maybe this isn't for you but look at this beautiful man he's hydrated and ready to go into his enclosure the fawn that got hit by a car in the last video is doing well and this adorable little bobcat is doing well too and he's going to be transferred to another facility for bobcats very soon. And later that night, I got to do my very first wildlife release with my own permit. Toad cast moment. Mm, that sure is green. What? Shrek water? Shrek water here at the Urban Rescue Branch? Mm, take a look at this, guys. Look at this beautiful green water.
Well, good afternoon to everybody. Somebody called me about a bat with a broken wing that was flying around their shop. They are one of the most rabies vector species out there. I'm gonna have to be very careful when transporting this little bean. First, I'm gonna get some Gatorade at HEB for all the boys working on the property right now. Never handle bats without oh, gloves and take extreme was... caution okay. whenever you're putting them in a box. But this poor little baby was living in the attic of a car dealership and then he got scared and broke his wing. But you can tell he very clearly has a broken wing right here. Other than that broken wing though, this guy is completely fine. He's not bleeding anywhere else. It's just that part of his body that's messed up. I think the Austin Bat Refuge should be able to take care of this guy. I called them and they told me that if I wanted to bring him down, I could. And we also might get to show you guys the rest of their facility. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. I think we should be able to help this little guy. Just go ahead and close him up. This is the Austin Bat Refuge. They're the only rehabber anywhere near us that takes in bats. Most people don't because of the liability. And they have this incredible facility that is basically a greenhouse with foggers. So this way they can breed moths all year round so the fledgling bats can grow up and learn how to hunt. They also all have tags and names, believe it or not, and they get hand-fed mealworms every day. Oh, she's so cute. Her name's Wendy. So it turns out, contrary to what many people believe, bats are not really aggressive and they won't just be out to get you unless you're bothering them. But certain species like red bats tend to be more aggressive than the And other. these guys even plant night-blooming flowers and other plants that will attract and feed the moss that they're farming. And they use old beehives that are infested with waxworm. For an actual beekeeper, this is a horrid thing to see in your hive but for these guys it's ideal because they're actually using it to farm the parasites but look at this you guys they're rehabbing this many bats and they still keep track of oh all their feeding goodness. schedules and their names and this is normal for a rehab obviously but when they have this many bats it's hilarious look they have a map of where they all are this is her first time flying is she a pup yeah, this year's pup, and she's raised by a rehabber in the valley. And this little pup is just learning how to fly. Really good work, my friend. What Very species is this? You. Southern yellow bat. These guys also work with the city of Austin on preventing natural bat habitats from being destroyed. Look at this cringe little glizzy gobbler. And this is how they drink. And just like Pam's place with songbirds, this is how they take care of the pups when they're in restricted mobility. And this was my first time ever holding a red bat. You see how it has that little tag on its arm? Every one of these bats has a name and a little special place where it roosts every night. <laughs> Thank you, Diane and Lee McKenzie, for letting me tour your facility. These guys are awesome. And just like all things wild, these guys work very hard all through pup season, and they rely on donations to keep things running. Next day, I went by the rehab to check on the hawk that got shot, shot and he's doing well. I also got to chop up these pickles for a bit, and this little raccoon with distemper came in, so we had to put him down. Look at this poor Sadly, boy. Sadly, distemper turns these little guys into zombies, basically, and if we don't wipe everything down with this stuff, everything might die, including this little fox. But this hawk that got shot is healing up really well, and we'll be able to check his wound next week. This little bunbo here was attacked by a cat but he's doing well. Yeah, I also got to work with their vet partner on giving this guy two different types of dewormer. And we finished the day with sorting through this bag of 30 bunnies. And this little guy survived a triple coyote attack. Look at that. And he's actually recovering pretty well. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Urban Rescue Branch. Man, that has been an insane week. Boy, do I have a lot of content to show you guys in the upcoming week. I have plans that I cannot reveal to you right now because the haters will sabotage me. All of the earth here is dry, scorched, and dead. And all the cappies are back here in the shade because it's too hot for them to be even over by the pond. I rehomed the other male goat because he kept attacking Kevin. Also, our little garbanzo bingus is doing very well. And we had a very special visitor come here, you guys. A very special visitor that we're going to show you guys in the next videos. He came and we made a nice little fun video with a bunch of fruit here. You guys know I love supporting other small YouTubers. So we had another small YouTuber come by and make a video here. Because of some circumstances, I had to drive them back up to Dallas before I could clean out the pond. Okay, thankfully, because of the intake bay, it's not as bad as I I thought it would be. But look at my little precious catfish in there. I'm basically just taking these. It looks like the cappies were eating a lot of them. I'm throwing them in here and over here for the bees and for petunia. Oh my gosh, there's tons of them. Look at that, you guys. Those are all baby cichlids. Wow, life is flourishing in this pond. Whoa, might just have to like the video for that one. <laughs> and it's good to see that even the stuff out here is not going to waste. And it looks like these peaches are actually about ripe as well. Good morning, the baby. Now I need to get the kangaroos out of here. Come on, my precious. Precious queen, get out. Come on, honey. Okay, I cleaned everything out of here, but I want to keep the kangaroos safe, so I'm going to gently pick up this little... I call these bee nuggets. I'm going to take my bees back to where they belong. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, guys, I'm going to somehow turn all the clips from the last week into some kind of video for you all. So much has happened, and it's so hot here, and we've been getting so much done that Uncle Ben's going a little bit crazy. He turns into a little pancake when he gets really hot. This happens, I like to take a little ice cube and just... 
put this on his back. This helps him cool down a little bit, see? You want to try the ice cube, Mr. Ounce? It's too hot for me to chew the ice cube. This boy's so hot that I'm just gonna rub some ice all over his neck. I know that boy was real hot outside. And he loves this. Look, you guys, put his head right on that ice cube. Precious little creature. That's crazy, though. I'll be keeping this little guy inside from now on. I put it in here so he can have food and water. And just like whenever he had cancer, I'm gonna give him free range of the house until it gets a little bit colder outside. But I love you guys. I appreciate you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. Oh, almost forgot to tell you.